right, welcome back. We've got a new update today, a day earlier than normal. Usually we get updates Thursdays, sometimes Fridays, and every once in a while we'll get a Wednesday update. Uh, today's the day we got version 2.7.18.30348 open beta. Uh, again, this is I only do the open betas uh, because that's where all the new stuff comes in first. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We have quite a few things. I'm not really sure uh, what most of these are. Um, most of these, the root cause or the root issue that was reported that caused this update, they don't really explain what that is or why they did what they did. Like for example, one of the fixes says POTUS improvement. I don't, I don't know what that means. Or fixed max toss anticipation queue. We had a max toss anticipation queue, so I'm not really sure what it means by fixed. Was it just at the wrong spot? I, I'm not really sure. Um, they don't link uh, descriptions to each of these fixes, so I'm not really sure on the majority of these. The more, majority of these seem to be very specific uh, to very specific reported issues, and I'm not really sure what they're in relation to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the ones that I do know, and I'm going to go over the new things that have been added to the F-16. So, so as a crew chief, I am really excited about this first one. <laughs> it's not first on the list of fixes, but they put in here, it says fixed bit test timings. Now, I wasn't really worried too much about the timing. It was about the correct amount of time. It was the animations that I wasn't really happy with. It didn't really match what a digital flickish bit looks like. Uh, so that was my only complaint. So I'm not sure what timings mean. I hope it means animations, but we're about to find out. So let's test it. All right, let's check out the bit test. Uh, I'm going to compare it to an actual digital flickish block 50 bit. So to turn the bit on, just come back here and turn on the bit. So I, I can't complain. I mean, it's 98, 99% there, but honestly, I don't care. This is good enough. I'm, if they leave it like this, I'll be happy. Uh, I mean, the timing isn't exact, and uh, but I think that's ridiculous. If you're gonna get really that nitpicky about it, a millisecond sooner, like I don't, I don't care. What we had before and what we have now is worlds apart. I mean, this is this actually looks like a digital flickish bit. So. As an ex F-16 crew chief, I think it's good. It's good enough. Good enough for government work. All right, let's move on. Added one and two LODs, L-O-Ds. L-O-D stands for level of detail. So one and two level of details, my guess are the different distances. So when you're looking at a jet from the outside, uh, when you're in your F-2 view right here, you are in the highest detail level. But to optimize this sim so that you're not, so that not everybody is using an enormous amount of GPU and CPU power just to fly, when you've got a flight of uh, three F-16s that are like five miles apart, 10 miles apart, 20 miles apart, when you have this little dot a long ways away, it's not literally trying to render the full resolution F-16 from way out there, you know? So they've got multiple levels of detail for different distances and uh, visibility. So further out, it's going to drop down to a lower level of detail, less polygons, and then further out from that, even more so. So I'm assuming level one and two are two distances. I'm assuming, I don't know, I'm not in the development team, so that's just an assumption on my part. Next, we're going to add a couple of additions to the M120 HUD symbology and a fix to the M120 itself. So, uh, start with A120 AMRAM improved position estimation and reacquisition when target passes uh, through notch. Missile common filter was adjusted to significantly improve missile performance against maneuvering targets 
many other improvements. It means if you lose lock before it gets to its uh, A pole position or M pole position, then uh, and the missile has gone active with with either high PRF or medium PRF, then it's going to go after its last known location, the, the target's last known location, and try and reacquire the target uh, on its own. The next is added AIM-120M and F-pole indications on the HUD. So, got a target out here. Once I find it, uh, I'm going to lock onto it, and we're going to pause the sim so we can take a look at the new AIM-120 symbology. So, there he is. I'm going to get a single target track on him. All right. All right, so new symbology. I'm actually going to go over more of the symbology than just the M-pole and F-pole. That way uh, you get a better idea of what the M-pole and F-pole is. So this whole area here represents the DLZ, the Dynamic Launch Zone. This little triangle up here at the top, that is your R arrow mark. That's your range aerodynamic. This represents the maximum kinematic range of the missile. It's the longest range shot that you possibly have a chance of hitting the target. Uh, but you have to loft the missile, so there's there's some uh, angles that you'll have to get. You're going to have to nose up to put the little circle within the big circle uh, and loft the missile towards the target, and the target will have to have never made a single maneuver during the entire flight of the missile for you to get that hit. Um, I think maybe you get away with a slight movement, a little bit of maneuvering, but I don't think... From what I've read, any maneuvering, I mean, I'm pretty sure you have to have a target that's just not going to move. It's going to continue to fly straight and level, and you, you might hit the, the target if you fire there. This circle is your R-opt. This is your range optimal. It's basically the same as the R-arrow, uh, but without having to loft or make azimuth changes. It's still going to need to be a target that it flies straight and level and does not maneuver. Um, same thing, but you won't have to loft the missile. If you're going to be firing your missiles at fighter jets, these are not the spots to fire them. Now the top of the bracket here, this staple, this giant staple, the top of it is your RPI, which is the range probability of intercept. From my understanding, this is basically a replacement of your R-Max 1. This is your maximum range without having to loft or change your azimuth. The, the missile can actually turn on its own and, and bleed a little energy and still kind of make it. Um, but it's going to be gliding to the target. So again, fighters, if you're firing at fighters and you fire at the at the uh, RPI and they maneuver hard and notch you or notch the missile, you might not get a hit. Uh, so again, this is a good spot to put them on the defensive though, um, but it's not going to be a very good uh, guarantee of a hit. Down here in this closed bracket, the top of the closed bracket is your RTR, that's your range and turn and run. So range, turn, and run is what RTR stands for. This represents the maximum range shot, assuming the target turns away from your aircraft to tail uh, aspect at launch. So at this point, if they turn around and fly away from you, I still have a pretty good shot at hitting you if I fire within the, the closed bracket. Again, there is no guaranteed kill zone in the DLZ, but if you fire within the closed bracket here, the missile is going to be pretty deadly. Down here at the bottom is your R min, that is your range minimum. It's basically, if you try to fire uh, below that, you're not going to have enough time for the AMRAM to activate and actually acquire the, the target. So you don't want to fire below that. You're either going to need to go aim nines or guns at that point. Uh, it's way too close for an AMRAM. So you've got three phases in the AIM-120. Once it's launched, it has the, you have the mid phase, acquisition phase, and the final phase. So the mid phase, Right after you launch it, this is the point at which the AIM-120 is guiding itself towards the target uh, based on the data it's getting from the data link from your FCR, your radar. That dinky little radar in the nose of the, the AIM-120 can't see that target just yet. So it's getting help from your radar to get there. That's the mid phase. That's where it's, it's uh, getting its course actions from the data link from your jet. After that, you hit the acquisition phase, and that's where the uh, A-pole, M-pole, and F-pole come in, uh, into play. So A-pole is the range from your aircraft to the target when the missile uh, goes active in high PRF, so high pulse repetition frequency. There's also MPRF, medium pulse repetition uh, frequency, uh, but high is the first acquisition phase that the M120 will go into, where it tries to acquire the target on its own without the data link. And this is what we would call going husky. So my missile is husky at that point. M-pole is the same as the A-pole, but it's uh, MPRF, medium pulse repetition frequency. And 
And at this point, the missile is considered pitbull. So when someone says AIM-120 is pitbull, that means it's in MPRF mode. f pull is the range from your aircraft to the target when the missile will impact the target. So this 14M right here is your m pole. This is 14 miles from the target when the missile goes active. So we know at that point it'll be, uh, it'll be in MPRF mode. This A down here is active 22. That is 22 seconds until the missile goes into HPRF active mode. This is not your A pole. This is just the time till HPRF. Once I fire the missile, I'm going to lock in that M pole at the bottom of my DLZ. So here we go. All right, so now we've got a few things that have changed. At the bottom of the bracket, the DLZ, it says 14M. That's because I launched it at the 14M point. So my M pole is now 14 miles and active 18 seconds to HPRF. Once I get to 14 miles from the target, the missile will be in MPRF mode, and that A is counting down to HPRF mode. High frequency versus mid -fre medium frequency. High frequency is really good at range. Medium frequency is better at closer range. So we're going to watch this uh, countdown. Ten seconds. Okay, we've got a couple new things here on the HUD now. Right here we've got the predicted f pull for the missile in flight. This is not your F-pole for the missile on the rail that you're about to launch. Uh, this is the F-pole for the missile that is already in flight. The T below it is your TTI, time to impact. We have 20 seconds till impact. The F-pole is, again, the distance between me and the aircraft at the point of impact, so nine miles. Back up on the DLZ, we've got 11M. That is the M-pole for the missile that is on the rail right now. If I were to fire it, my M-pole would be 11 miles. And at this point, you do not need to be locked on the target anymore. At this point, if you choose to do so, you can deselect the target, unlock it, and fly away. Uh, the missile is active. It is using its own internal radar to track the target and uh, keep it acquired. You don't have to, but you can if you so choose. So we're going to sit here and wait for that TTI to come down to zero. And then we're going to start looking outside the canopy for a hit. Six seconds. And at this point, you don't need to be locked anymore. And there we go, right there. So next we have incorrect DLZ, R Max 1 and R Opt. Uh, as I explained earlier, R Opt is your optimal, range optimal. And uh, R Max 1, as far as I know, R Max 1 isn't related to the AIM 120. R Max 1 is related to most other weapons like the AIM 9, the JDAM, uh, Mavericks, that's your R Max 1, R Max 2. Um, but, um, so I'm assuming it means, I, I, I'm assuming they're just kind of packaging them both into the same fix and correct DL, uh, DLZ for R Max 1 for the AIM 9, I'm guessing, uh, and R Opt. I'm not sure, it doesn't really say. It just says fixed, incorrect DLZ, RMAX 1, and ROPT. So RMAX 1 is your, uh, for the AIM-9 is your, obviously your max range uh, with the AIM-9, but not necessarily the best spot to go. RMAX 2 is where the engine will still be burning up until that point. So you've got the, the majority of its maneuverability and speed and energy if you fire within the RMAX 2, uh, below the RMAX 2. And then of course our min, it's the minimum range, self-explanatory. Next, missile override mode, cool setting. So we're gonna hit the dogfight switch down here on the MFD. We can see the cool mode on the AIM-9X. Warm and cool. So cool mode means that we are pumping argon into the seeker head of the AIM-9X, cooling it down, which improves our detection ability. So if the seeker head is really cold, then any heat source outside of it is going to be much brighter to the sensor. It's going to be able to see heat a lot easier than if the seeker head itself is hot and everything else is hot. 
you want to have that contrast uh, for the heat seeker. However, in real life, I believe you can't leave this on indefinitely because the argon supply will deplete. So I, I know there's not an indefinite supply of argon and it will deplete, so we can't just leave it in cool the whole time. I don't remember how much argon you have or how much time you have uh, with it in cool mode. I found somebody online saying 90 minutes. I don't know if that's true or not. Basically, that's what it's doing. Go into dogfight mode and uh, it immediately starts to cool the AIM-9X seeker heads. Alright, warn mnemonic size, position, and flashing rate. Letter W in HUD font and warning warning voice message and warn mnemonic logic adjusted. Warning warning message timings. Added caution caution voice message logic. So all of these can be uh, demonstrated by just opening up the, uh, <laughs> the spider lock here. So we're going to open this up. And immediately warning, we're going to start warning, getting the warn. Warning, warning. And then of course caution. Because we're now in master caution. And that's just telling us that the cabin pressure is uh, compromised. Because I've unlocked the canopy. So um, I guess the font and the frequency of the flashing and the sound of the warning warning and caution caution have been added, changed and adjusted to make it more real to life. So. I'm going to go ahead and close that, and that, alright, there goes my master caution, and no more caution lights. Looking good. Keyboard only, throttle can be pushed past the canopy spider. So what they're referring to here is the spider right here, this right here. Warning, 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 warning. So with the spider out, I cannot go into full burner. So warning, try warning, and go in and it warning, locks it. Warning. I try to go in and the throttle is stuck, caution. can't go past it. Caution. I have to close it and then I can go past into full burn. So I guess with the keyboard, you can continue to hit, uh, I think it's numpad, plus or minus or something like that, or uh, page up, page down for the throttle. You can continue to push it forward with the keyboard, even with the spider out, and get into afterburner. Like I said, a lot of these fixes are very specific scenarios that I'm unaware of, but uh, this one actually describes it, so wanted to show that. All right, I hope this helps explain a few things, uh, what the M and F poles are, uh, as well as the new symbology and that bit test. Man, I am so excited about that. I know it's stupid, but as a crew chief, it makes me happy. <laughs> All right, hopefully we'll do this again in two weeks.